Good morning, everyone. I'm making another video and uh, I'm going to uh, be talking about something that came to my uh, conscious awareness and it's related to healing with nature wounds. That's the best I guess title I could find is healing with nature wounds. <clears throat> and uh, please forgive me because I'm I'm going to be all over the place again. Only because it's it's something um this topic is very difficult to talk about. It's probably because um, what came to me what was is relatively new, so I haven't had the deep conversations within myself, or I haven't connected to the entirety of the. Uh, of the quote idea so I I guess we are going to struggle together to uh, make some sense out of this and to connect to this so I'm sitting by the pond here it's a really nice place to just come and relax Again, you could see the uh, turtles, and um, you see the heads popping up here and there. A lot of turtles in this lake, in this pond. Okay, so um, what is this thing about healing with nature wounds? Well came to my awareness, uh, to my attention that um, a lot of the interactions of human beings with nature is unfortunately very destructive. We have a tendency to dominate nature and to uh, what cause what I is call wounds to nature. And um, nature being a supra-organism <laughs> has the capacity to heal itself. Just like every other organism, birds, you know, cats, dogs, human beings, trees, plants, we, we all have the capacity to heal our wounds and um, so for example when human beings uh, harvest trees in a forest sometimes it could be done in a very uh, harsh and destructive manner like in in the case of industrial forestry like like a big massive clear cut where uh, all the trees are removed at a very large scale that could be considered to be a wound um, mostly because it's it's a uh, it's not a natural process in which nature is uh, in balance with its you know, like you, you might have uh, some wind knocking down huge areas of trees. You could have a fire, a forest fire, burning a huge area. But all these things are part of nature, and it has the capacity, the resilience to uh, to continue um, to heal. 
if if that is a wound, you know, but um, but a, a huge clear cut done with machines can be seen as a wound. But the, I mean, it's it's not pretty to see. But in most cases, Nate, if you come back like 500 years later, you probably couldn't even tell there was a uh, a clear cut in, in that area. Assuming that you know the cut was done in a forest that has the that had uh, the resilience to come back, there are some very fragile areas in nature that uh, in the forest that might not come back to its previous state and uh, and flip to another state of existence. You know, you could go from a a forest to a um, a step, a prairie step, where it becomes grass dominated, shrub dominated, and it never actually returns to its previous forest state. Um, so, I uh, here I'm introducing the the notion that of a of a wound and the capacity to heal. And all these terms are relative because someone could argue, you know, that that's uh, anthropomorphism. It's not really a wound, and it's not really a healing uh, process. But just bear with me because we're, I'm using these words to simplify um, to simplify things, so we could we could be on the same page here. Okay, I'm using it in in the generic human sense of wound and healing. I'm applying this to nature. So, when a human beings cause wounds to nature, well, I guess what I'm what I'm kind of remembering, what I came came to my attention is that while nature is healing itself, it also offers the possibility for humans to heal themselves. One could look at, at it this way. It's like we're, humans can piggyback onto the, the healing of nature. And so, so it brings to mind the, the idea that we see ourselves as disconnected to nature and but if we but if we um, remove that disconnect and that the idea of the individual self being uh, completely sovereign and um, and non not related to its environment and we say okay there we are connected to nature we are we can be seen as one as being highly connected and dependent then there would be no difference between nature healing itself and humans healing themselves it would be a big collective we are healing ourselves and so this if the, if the human, if we, if we wound ourselves, then we heal ourselves, and we is nature and human together. So, because there's a big disconnect, um, it's often the case that humans will inflict destruction and wound nature and then move on and not seize the opportunity to heal from uh, nature healing itself. So there's always an opportunity for humans to better themselves through nature. And um, this came to my uh, attention because of uh, 
my spiritual practice of uh, sacred gardening. And so, I, I mean, I often call gardening uh, what people do and what I do to, to a small extent uh, in the garden as ego gardening, not eco. Hey, froggy. <laughs> got a frog uh, singing with the cicadas and all the birds around here so not eco gardening ego gardening and the reason being that it is a human ego that is dominating nature forcing human will forcing our ego onto the land to see the results we want to see uh, no matter what nature has to say or with very little regards to what nature has to say so you want to grow tomatoes well you uh, you cut down the forest you till the ground you bring in cow, cow manure uh, you uh, plant some uh, hybridized or quote uh, heirloom which is also hybridized, <laughs> by the way, um, tomatoes, and then you grow tomatoes, you force your will. And if ever some weeds come, this thing people call weeds, you just you remove them. And if insects come, you put insecticides and so on and so forth. So you get the results you want. That is ego gardening. And it doesn't matter if you spray biodynamic preparations or you bring in composted manure uh, after the fact or during the fact that you're dominating your, this, uh, this piece of nature. It's ego gardening and, and you're not healing nature by uh, whatever you're doing in that, in that mode, uh, in that mindset. Nature can heal itself from your intervention if you if you go away and you leave it alone. It'll come back to uh, a forest, assuming that you were that the forest is uh, surrounding your uh, garden. So, what what happened to me in the garden is that I. Um, I was doing uh, some eco gar uh, ego gardening uh, and I wanted to force my will to grow um, some food crop, human food crop. So I, uh, I mowed the, uh, the grass, well first the, the trees had already been removed and then grass grew and then I mowed the grass and I mowed the, the quote weeds and then I tilled the ground and expose the uh, bare soil, which is kind of a wound to nature. It's like um, it's like when it, you fall on the ground and you uh, scrape your knee and you tear off a piece of skin uh, and you expose the flesh. You remove the skin. So um, kind of analogous to that. So what happened is that um, shortly after I tilled the ground, some uh, quote weeds grew, but but there's no such thing as weeds. So I quickly identified what were those wonderful, beautiful plants that <laughs> the seeds that had uh, germinated, and those small plants turned out to be wild amaranth. And I made a video on that, him, how I'm harvesting this. Uh, these seeds but this wild amaranth grew everywhere everywhere and so I decided I was not going to put the seeds and grow human crop or what we call food I was going to eat the wild amaranth and uh, and just let nature reclaim itself and so that's when it hit me that I had 
my uh, I had dominated and inflicted a wound on nature so to speak you know like and nature wanted to reclaim itself and heal itself by growing weeds but by its healing itself it was offering me the the chance to heal myself so i can i could piggyback onto that healing the nature healing i could piggyback on the nature wound to heal myself and this um the healing myself occurs at multiple levels it occurs one through the realization that um that nature and myself are not disconnected and that we can heal together and the second point being that this wild amaranth is probably uh, a lot more nutritious than whatever I would have put there <laughs> and the seeds were like I mean if you haven't had amaranth seeds or read up on it this is like it's a blessing it's like such an amazing uh, food source for human beings so I've been eating the leaves uh, I've been now I'm collect harvesting the seeds and I've been eating the seeds and it has produced food for my friends and so much of it I'm it's like I probably would not have been able to grow that much human food crop so to speak and this wild Dharma has so much vitality that it's healing my body, healing my my conscious awareness, healing my healing me by healing itself. So that is so fantastic. It's an amazing realization. And so it, humans, I mean, we we are bound to interact with nature. It, we have to. Uh, claim our space our living space and claim and we are going to uh, to clear land and we are going to have an interaction with nature and dominate and force our will however there is an opportunity to seize uh, to seize um, and grow out of the out of what we're doing to nature and that's the part that is not happening okay so I could imagine like you see like if uh, every time we harvest the forest we cleared some space in our minds to actually try to piggyback and and learn something from it at a deep soul level it would already make the the action of cutting down the forest less uh, um, less debilitating and I guess to a certain degree it is uh, all those clear cuts that are done and all the pictures circulating have affected some human beings and awoken uh, uh, in some human beings the a sense of responsibility towards uh, towards um, their relationship with nature you know there's some people maybe they weren't at all environmentalists and after seeing what we're done what we're doing to the forest they have become environmentalists or more responsible towards their actions to nature so that in a sense collectively some people are healing from the the actions the destruction done to nature and I'm not advocating we should purposefully go destroy nature in order to gain the opportunity to heal but um, but I, I now recognize that that opportunity is there and and I'm, I'm kind of questioning and I'm wondering there's a part of me wondering if if done w with uh, with that spiritual objective in mind of 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 healing if it wouldn't be somewhat a little bit beneficial to cause some small wounds to nature 
um, like in a ritualistic fashion. I don't know, but like, um, I wonder if that's not possible because, um, there is something about in, um, eclectic medicine in, in, uh, herbalism where some people, um, It's, it's a bit windy. I don't know if this wind is causing some audio problems. Okay, but in, in herbal um, medicine, there are some herbs out there that are slightly toxic. Or very toxic. But that can heal human beings. And But you have to take only a little bit and that just that small little amount can heal a disorder a disharmony in the human body but if you take too much of the plant or the or the roots or whatever uh, whatever it is then it's it becomes uh, poison and it becomes uh, negative it it, it uh, it's not a positive effect so there's something about uh, slight toxicity being healing that's what the most of the um, pharma pharmacology is is a lot based on that you know a lot of the medicine the pharmaceutical medicines in large quantities are, are very very uh, toxic but in small quantities are supposed to be beneficial and it's the uh, the doctor and the far the pharmacists that are trying to find what's the exact dosage of of the toxic product that can bring health. This is like a a mindset that is that has been with the human beings for a long time. I mean, before modern pharmacology, in the uh, the alchemists, they knew about that. Um, it's the same with uh, it's the same concept used with uh, these psychedelic drugs uh, or these um, mind bending plants and mushrooms. You know, large quantities are not good. Small quantities can help um, expand consciousness and then uh, can cause healing of emotional trauma, mental blockages etc etc and um, gosh uh, it all it even is even related to when we um, kill animals to feed ourselves okay or or harvest plants kill plants to feed ourselves um, it is inflicting destruction and you know to take the life of another being in order to preserve your own you see what I'm saying it's like it's like the uh, part of the destructive nature of human beings is causes uh, is linked to our sustaining our lives and to um, now um, when it comes to uh, the the level of of the destruction now that's where we have to learn w how to dose this where if you take too much of a toxic product if you destroy too much nature maybe the the lessons that nature is teaching is just o overwhelming and, and you can't assimilate It's almost like we were not smart enough. If you're, okay, how can I put this? If you're dumb enough to, to inflict that level of a wound, 
then you're probably not smart enough to, to learn the lessons. <laughs> you might just like learn a, a percentage of the lesson, not the full lesson. Because if you learn the full lesson, then you don't inflict that damage anymore. So uh, even when uh, the vegetarians harvest the carrots or a carrot plant, you take the life of the plant. But the plant feeds you and therefore prevents you from dying, which is a form of healing or, or sustaining health. But there would be different levels. So you could, if you eat uh, animal flesh, you take the life of a pig or you take the life of a cow or you take the life of a chicken and that is that is uh, sustains your life and uh, but it is it causes a it is a destructive act but then if you harvest the carrot it is also a destructive act if you just harvest a leaf of kale and then the kale grows another leaf then that's destructive but then if you just eat an apple off a tree then that is much less destructive and to a certain degree the apple tree has actually produced the fruit for you to take okay so so there's different levels of uh, our um, of the destructive element of our sustaining our health and our uh, healing ourselves in our interactions with nature. So, so it would be almost impossible to live your life without having any destructive uh, behaviors in nature just because you have to feed yourself. So yeah, anyways, that's um that's pretty much it. I'm trying to figure out right now um how how to how to figure out the dosage of um the dosage of the toxicity and destruction that is needed for me to heal and whether or not it would it is worthy to it, to cause small interventions in my relationship with nature which is a relationship with myself in order to bring things to my awareness and to heal i'm wondering if that if that is not necessary had i not tilled the land okay i would not have had learned this lesson and I would not have all this amazing uh, amaranth to eat. So, seizing the opportunity to heal in uh, our relationship with nature, our relationship with ourselves, the destructive things we do to ourselves are all... Um, can all contribute to our growing, uh, our healing ourselves. And um, I'm going to end by saying that, you know, I am um, personally have recognized uh, some of, of my behaviors and some of the addictions that I have or had that were very destructive on my body and on my spirit. But ultimately, they, they served a purpose and uh, I grew with those um, behaviors and and I see around me a lot of people that are sabotaging their lives they are inflicting wounds upon themselves and it is perhaps a way uh, for them to grow I mean uh, it, we could we could go really deep with this stuff here. I mean, if we um, if you think about it in terms of incarnating 
of of spirits of a, that we are spirits incarnating on this planet inside of the body of a human being. Um, well, uh, before we were incarnated, if we were non-corporeal consciousness. Uh, Um, we didn't have this or we didn't ha perhaps we didn't have this capacity of of quickened growth because we didn't have the capacity to wound ourselves and learn important lessons I don't know maybe this like maybe being born on this planet serves the purpose of of hastening and quickening our growth as spirits because of the lessons learned through the wounding process and I'm not like uh, it's not a fetish of mine to wound myself or anything like that, you know, like it would have been nice to incarnate uh, in this body and uh, in this planet and not have any uh, illnesses and just like, you know, everything be in perfect harmony and this and that, but it doesn't appear that that's the case in, uh, for many reasons, but there's a lot of suffering, a lot of wounds, and a lot of healing that needs to be done. And this planet is actually uh, a pretty good place to learn some lessons. Alright, so there it is. I guess uh, it's a positive message is that next time you see a, a clear cut then um, seize the opportunity to heal through piggybacking on nature's uh, lessons that nature the lessons nature offer to you while it heals itself it he while you heal yourself we us collectively heal ourselves okay that's it all right take care happy healing